This is Andy Purwal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. And I'm delighted to be joined by WBO Super Featherweight World Champion Jamal Herring over Zoom. Jamal, how are you? How is life? Hey, I'm, I'm doing good. Uh, um, life is good. I can't complain. Uh, I'm just in a good space. I'm happy. I feel strong. I'm healthy, which is, which is more important. And I'm just ready to go. It's good to hear you're in such good spirits, Jamal. Obviously, getting ready to defend your world title once again next week against Carl Frampton. Talk to me about your preparations, Jamal. How's everything been, especially in these times when I imagine it could have been a little difficult to get certain sparring or what have you? And I know you've obviously been with Terence Crawford. He's as good as he can imagine. But oh, yeah, um, Bud is actually downstairs right now um, on the treadmill running as we speak. He's downstairs on work. He'll probably be up in a few, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, preparation has been great. It's actually been the best I've had in a long time, especially like you mentioned with the whole um, things that we're going through with the pandemic and things of that nature. But um, I can't complain. Um, like I said, for the for the for the for this huge moment, we've definitely stepped it up, and we actually haven't had issues getting the spar we needed. You know, we've um, we just, if anything, we we still played it safe, make sure everyone's been tested coming into camp. But I've I've had um, tremendous um, spar partners from all over. Other than, other than uh, obviously, Bud uh, Crawford um, helped me prepare for this fight. Ugh. Jamal, how does this fight with Carl compare to your past defenses and, of course, your other fights aside from defending world title? I'll say that again. How, do, how does this fight with Carl compare to your other defenses of your world title? Um, it, it, it uh, there is no comparison. You know, what I mean, Carl Frampton is is a big name. It's a big name on my resume, so. I can't really compare it to anyone else, you know, that I've, uh, I've trained, prepared before. But, um, you know, I have a great team, of course. You know who my team is. Brian McIntyre, Red Spike, Lisa Diegas, Jamie Bell, Terrence Crawford. So, you know, we, we, we've been doing everything that, you know, that we feel is necessary. We, we, we leave in no stone, no stone unturned. So, um, we de- and we're, te- we're taking this fight very seriously, very seriously. And... Like I honestly, this is probably the most motivated I've been in such a long time, because of the um, like I said, the um, just just the name that Carl Frank, you know, what Carl Frank represents and what he brings to the table, and then, you know, I I have nothing really bad to say about him, you know. I'm just happy that I'm in. I'm actually in the moment where people are considering it as a huge fight for the new year, of course. So that's really what really matters to me, you know, is 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 legacy and, and how um, you know, what this fight will do for me down the road in terms of people actually looking back on the fight and talking about, you know, the fight and how it went down. Jamal, you, you just mentioned it there. You haven't really got anything bad to say about Carl. And I know Carl feels the same about you. There's a lot of mutual respect between both of your teams. Right. Um, but going back over to kind of social media, you know, you have interacted with each other. Has he at all ever got underneath your skin or do you feel you've got underneath his skin at all? No, I'm glad you brought that up because I know, I know he did. Um, once mentioned that, that he probably got was getting in, in, in my head, but expect him and Frank Warren at least. But I don't take I don't take it to fans. You, uh, fans, you know, you guys should know me by that. I, I'm really easy going, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, words can't really do anything when the when the bell rings. You know, it, it, the hands do all the talking. So I don't like for me. It, I don't think. I don't think I, I probably say I, I probably didn't don't I probably don't get into into his head as well. You know what I mean? Because he's been at the stage before, so I don't really look at um, the war, the war of words, as as a huge factor going into this fight. I, I, I believe it's, it's, it all comes down to um, a skill of will. You know what I mean? And, and who comes prepared for for, for the fight um, at 100. percent So I'm not really bothered. Like I, even if they, even if words were exchanged, you see, you guys see me all the time. I, I may joke and laugh about it and just and just move on with my day. I don't go back and forth. With um people on social media like that, you guys know I communicate with everybody. I mean, even his fans, I will communicate with them, and be um as long as they're respectful, I have no issue with it. So yeah, the, um, for them to think that they may be getting under my skin, I've heard worse. You know, I've been through worse. So at, at this point, it may be like I, I'm just ready to fight. That's why I've, I've probably been in a more quiet, a little bit more quiet lately because, like I said, I've been fully focused on what's really important, and, and which is the fight and defending my title. Jamal, heading into this fight, people talk about kind of Cole's boxing ability and then the advantages you hold with the size and the reach advantage and how kind of the, the fight will gel together come fight night next weekend. How do you expect it to play out when the pair of you are in the ring? 
Um, I think it'll, it'll come down to probably a chess match in the beginning because Carl, Carl is, a, is, a, is a boxer, so just myself. You know, we're both boxers. So, of course, we're going to um, try to set traps and things of that nature for, for um, seeing who, who, who will bite first. But, like, yeah, I mean, where I, where I may be him in terms of the size and physical advantages, I always say that Carl Frampton has the experience of factor over me because he's, he's been in – He's been in the, 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 the big fights. He's had the, you know, he's had the huge moments. So I, I, that's what I say. I always give him that, give him that respect. But, um, you know, for me, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm still a lot hungrier because, like, you know, despite what happens with this fight with Carl Frampton, he's still achieved a lot with his career, a lot that he could be proud of. And you know, what I mean, and I give him that's, and, I, and that's, that's respect. But I feel like there's still stuff that I still want to achieve on my end, and I have to win this fight in order to continue, you know, climbing and, um, you know, cement my own legacy. So, yeah, I mean, for the most part, like I said, it's it's, it's, it's going to be a good fight. I'm not taking them lightly because of the size and, and people, you know, because people are always thinking, oh, because he, he, they don't believe that he, he's big enough for the weight class. But, you know, he has the um, heart of a champion. He has a big heart. He proved that with the um, Josh Washington fight. He was hurt in that fight, early in that fight, and he still continued to press forward and move on. And, and, and seeing the, the, the last bell in that fight. So you can't, you can't underestimate anyone who has, you know, the heart and the determination of a champion. And that's the main thing that I see with him, despite, you know, the, um, his size and stature, you know, how he, he has the will and, you know, he, he has something on the line. He wants to make history. So you, you got to take all those things in, in, into consideration. I can't go in there thinking I'm just going to be a bully and just do whatever I want. No, I have to be smart. I still have to, I still have to implement my game plan and listen to what my, my corner says throughout the fight. Jamal, one thing I want to ask you is, um, this past weekend, I know you watched the Warrington-Lara fight. Right. Uh, on the undercard, I don't know if you saw it or not, as Alpha Barrett, Kiko Martinez. I caught it, I caught it. A very controversial uh, decision, at least on the cards. Is it a concern of yours travelling over here to the UK if the fight went to points that you might... Um, no, you know what? I can't. I can't focus on that. All right, I caught the fight in the middle, in the mid, in the mid round. So I really didn't watch it from beginning. I'll, I'll probably go back, but I did see. I actually did tune. I um, stayed tuned in to see what Eddie Hearn had to say. Um, you know, Eddie is a real is a real guy. He's a real one. You and what I mean by that is, even though his fighter won, he was still honest about what he felt about the scoring and the judging, and that says a lot because you don't see that. You don't see that from a lot of promoters, you know what I mean? So I give Eddie, you know, Eddie Eddie is, is a real stand-up guy. But in terms of my situation, I can't focus on that. Because at the end of the day, I have no control over that. I mean, I, I, I obviously, uh, I, I've spoken with my team and MTK Global about making sure that we have, you know, a neutral set of judges and things like that. But you, I can't, I can't control what those judges put on that paper at the end of the night. All I can do is, all I can do is go in there, fight my fight, um, even like well, any fight, I really don't really focus on the judges anyway. I just go in there and just take it one round at a time and, you know, and try to win one round at a time. You know what I mean? So if I feel like, if I felt like I slacked the last round, I know I need to pick it up the next round. And that, that, and, and that should show in terms of my performance with the judging, but no, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and um, like say that UK um, judging is bad for boxing because Let's be honest, we have bad judging here in the United States as well. So I think that happens anywhere. It doesn't just happen in the UK. It doesn't just happen in the United States. It just happens, you know, it just sometimes fighters get the, the worst luck, um, worst um, draw of luck in terms of the, of the judging. But I can't focus on that. You know what I mean? Uh, I just got to go in there and just take it one round at a time and just continue fighting my fight. Just to touch on that main event from this past weekend, because I know you watched the fight, Warrington Lara. It was a shock for many seeing Maurizio Lara um, stop Josh Warrington. Yeah. Just your thoughts on it, Jamal. And of course, kind of one thing people have spoken about is if Josh should have been pulled out of the fight earlier on. I think he should have. I think he should have. And uh, you know, we have seen too many accidents, and then you see you in the end, the end result with his situation with how it turned out. And I believe that I think because of his name and who he is and what he represents, the, the, the ref at least try to give him, you know, a little bit more of a chance to, um, you know, get it together. But I think it should have been stopped when you see when he got up after the first knockdown 
and he kind of stumbled almost into the referee's arms. Now, that right there should have been signed, despite who his name is. And like I said, it's nothing against Josh, Josh Washington. It's not like I like I have any personal beef with the guy. But we've seen too many accidents as it is in the sport that we don't – like you, you wouldn't want to see a guy like that who's, on, who's basically at the time – well, up until last weekend was the number one featherweight in the world go out worse, you know, and then he came in. So I think, like, yeah, I think that that was kind of scary, and I just, I like I said, I, I said my, I said my, you know, my my piece. I, I, I wish them, you know, a, a speedy recovery and, and things of that nature. And I like I said, I, I, I've seen stuff with Josh Martin, even you know, with you know, he sided with Frampton in this fight against me, but that doesn't mean that we're not human at the end of the day. Like I, I'm not, I'm still not gonna go out there and say, well, that's what he gets. And the, the, no, I'm like no, because he, you know, he has a family as well, and. Uh, you, we, none of us out here, the fans, fighters, we never want to see our own go out here and get hurt. We 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 lost too many. We lost too many um, fighters in the past couple of years alone due to um, fighters going on, go fights going on longer than they should have. But yeah, I think I think um, it, that fight should definitely been stopped after the first after the first knockdown. But um, credit to um, Laura, you know he 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 wasn't coming in there to to lay down. I think he made a huge statement with that fight. Um, I think doors were open for him. I know a lot of people complain that because, you know, Warrington vacated his title, that Laura should have been maybe the world champion now. But I think that with, either way, that, that that huge victory puts Laura in a good in a good position to make a lot of um a lot of good money and a lot of and, and potentially have a good uh, um a title fight in the future. Jamel, moving back to yourself, obviously um, you mentioned you've been with Terence and you've been sparring him. Talk to me about that and you feel what, what kind of benefits sparring somebody like Terence will give you and bring into your fight with Carl next week? Um, Terence is a bully. <laughs> Terence is a bully. But I need that push because, like you mentioned, my physical advantages – you know, sometimes I, I can get a little bit, a little bit complacent because with the guys I've been sparring with that are like Frampton stature, they're smaller. You know, like I got, I got a guy like um my, my good friend of mine's here, Christian Williams. He's he's same height frame as Carl Frampton. So when we're sparring, sometimes I get, I, I I can just easily move him around. But with Bud, it's like one of those things where where guy keeps you in line, keeps you keeps you focused on what, what what's important because you never know. Carl Frampton might bring a dog fight. So, you know, you got guys like Terrence Crawford who's going to be in your chest all day and make you fight and make you bite down. You know, that's, you know, it's good. It is a good experience. Like, like I said, um, like you've seen it, I'm pretty sure you've seen it. They, they, brought, them, they brought up like people question like, why am I sparring Terrence Crawford? Why not? That's, 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 that's good experience. That That's, um, I mean, look at, let's go, let's go even to Oscar Valdez's um, camp. He's sparring Canelo Alvarez. You know, is anybody is, is that bad for him to be sparring Canelo Alvarez? No, I don't. I don't believe so. If you can, if you can learn and gain that experience, then you know why not take full advantage of that? And um, that's why I got guys like um, Terrence Crawford here to just um, you know that, that another world champion to push me and and to keep me hungry and to, and to keep me going. So I mean, I, I, I'm I'm grateful. I love I love um, Bud for being here. To make sure that I'm I'm gonna be at my at my best, you know. So I'm pretty sure if, if Carl Frampton had a guy like a Bud Crawford's camp, he would take advantage of that too. You know what I mean? So so why not take full advantage of that? Because like because with a guy like that, you can actually see where your growth. Sometimes you get I mean we sometimes camps they get sparring partners that may be timid or maybe not pushing you hard enough, so you don't really get to see how much you've grown throughout the weeks. But with Bud. We just had a hard, hard talk yet yeah, um, last night, and he feels that I'm stronger than I was ever before. I'm a lot, I'm a lot sharper, and my mind is in a, is in a, is in a totally different place. So, like, I need I need stuff like that, and, but I need also guys to keep me to, to be honest with me at the same time. So if I'm slipping, if I'm messing up, I got I got Terrence Carpenter there to tell me, hey, you need to pick it up, or hey, this is what I'm seeing that you're doing wrong, but we can fix it by doing this. And he's like that, you know. If, I, if I'm if I'm making mistakes in the ring, he's gonna be there. To, like he's gonna be there to tell me if I'm messing up. He would just like he, he watches my sponsors just now, and he'll tell me, "Hey, why are you doing this?" Or, "Okay, let's change it up here and let's do that." So, and then like when when he when he doesn't speak and he just gives me the thumbs up, I know I'm doing something right. So yeah, so but like yeah, Bud is always gonna be honest with me because because if you don't 
handle and fix those issues here is going to carry out into the fight, and it could be worse. So I, I'd rather learn the hard way in the gym with a guy like Terrence Crawford than go into the real fight and potentially lose it because I didn't correct my mistakes when I had the opportunity to. Jamal, moving forwards, or well, moving backwards, uh, your fight last time out against the Quendo, I remember kind of the, the injuries you suffered and the concerns you had about right. your vision. Just talk to me about that, reflecting on it. How, how's, how's everything healed up now? And how concerned were you that you might have had some longer lasting damage? Thankfully, from the looks of it, everything's okay. Yeah, I mean, I was more concerned. Like, I really, like, going after that fight, I thought it was more like, I thought it was just like a, like a cut and blood was in my eye. But when I went to the doctors, they also thought, you know, I had it, I went directly to the hospital after that fight. Oh, <coughs> I, went, I went to the, hold on. I got some, I got some, I got some special for you. That's what's for you. I, did, I just told you. Oh. Listen, listen, now y'all can put this on. Like I said, like I was telling, I was just telling them that, like, with you here with me, you always keep it. She always honest. So if I'm messing up, you rather have me correct my mistakes here in the gym, and then go out there in the fight, and then sure. I'm slipping. And like I said, they they question why we were sparring. I'm like, yeah, we know he's not the same. Obviously, not the same stuff as friendly, but he has the experience factor, and he's gonna keep it real and honest with me. If I'm messing up, he's gonna push me. There's times where me, I, I can get like the days going there because he sees it. I get strong partners that I fully do whatever with him and with him, but that's not gonna do nothing for me in a, in a real I'm fight. I'm bigger than him, stronger than him. So I'm gonna push him, you know what I mean? And I know if he can, you know what I mean, withstand the pressure that I'm gonna bring to him, then he can withstand anybody at 130. So it's certain things, at certain levels, you take it to to get better each and every day. You know what I mean? If you got somebody that way more than you and they went, they laying on you and they pushing you around, you know what I mean? That's making you stronger at the same time. So when he goes out and fights somebody that his his size, he's gonna be, you know what I mean? So much stronger than that person because he's so used to getting pushed around and in the ring with somebody laying on him that's heavier than him. So that, that would make him better and in more shape and condition. Terrence, just whilst you're there, how does the fight between Jamel and Carl play out next week? How do it play out? How does the fight play out between Jamel and Carl? Jamel by stoppage. Jamel by stoppage. I wanted you. I want. Hey, I just want to give y'all that um that that good exclusive because I know it's hard. It's hard to get with him. So while I have him here, you know, like I said, you like it. Um, you know, like. You know, I'm, not, I'm not a brash guy. I don't. I don't go out here and, and make threats or try to. And like I said, the word on the, um, the war of words. I don't go out here and try to make you know intimidate guys by speaking. Like I want to prove with all action. And going back, like I said, I, like what you just said before you came in, my last fight, I was going through a lot. I, I had a five month camp. I suffered COVID. Me being a true champion, I thought it was still you know best for me to still go out there and defend my title. When you've seen it last year, a lot of world champions at the time, they were taking tune-ups or they were fighting at catchway fights because they didn't want to, they couldn't lose, they couldn't have their the full camp that they needed to lose the weight. But me, I lost weight not once, but twice in the fight was postponed, like three times. Um, I, I was on weight the first time, I, then I caught COVID. Then I was went to, went to the Vegas July 14th. And they postponed it again, and I was on weight then. Then I had to come back September and make way to get, you know what I mean? So it, 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 it was it was a lot going for me. And then when I got in the fight, you guys seen it. I was winning the fight. I put Okendo down with, with a one shot uppercut. So it's not like it's not like one of those things where he was winning and I was looking for a way out. No, when I went to the hospital, the doctors thought that I, I, I guess I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I, I'm always gonna be honest. I guess from 2016 when I lost to Shavikov and I really took a beating and I like and what fighter what, what fighter even admits to that? What fighter even even admits to that? Even like when he takes a beating, every you know some of you got make excuses. No, 2016 I took a beating. 2016 people thought I was gonna I, I, should, I was gonna leave boxing, and I had injuries. I have a um a cut like well, when, I, when, I, when I shave at least. There's a there's a still a there's still a um. A, um a scar from the Shavako fight from Astilla Head, but I had a hole in my lip. I had a busted, I had a busted right eye from head from um, the accidental head, but um I was really concussed that fight. I was I was really messed up. So with the doctors while after the O'Kennel fight, I guess it was an injury um that didn't heal um fully, like, like the, the correct way at least. 
and they thought I had a broken orbital bone from the head bust of Okendo. So that's what really messed up my eye. It wasn't the cut. Let's get that clear. It wasn't the cut, people. It was actually the eyeball itself. Um, you know, my, I, I, I had um, basically a scratch cornea, as, as, as they say, with the eyeball. But me, Steve Billy, and the champion, you guys seen it. I still said that I was going to fulfill my obligation no matter what the face called Frampton. I just needed to get, you know, needed time to heal and rest. And behind the scenes, you know, they were thinking I was, they, I was, they were trying to, you know, suspend me for six months where I had to basically vacate my title. So me being a champion again, I went out to the, to the, to the doctors. Um, I had got my eye taken care of. As you can like say, I'm, I'm better now. I'm 100% with my eye. Um, I signed with MTK Global so I can make the fight 100%. You know, I didn't want nobody thinking that my team was trying to shit from moving. No, I, I went to MTK and I, and I and I even started working with them to make the fight because you know we both work with Carl Frampton. And so that and then like like you see what Bud just said it. You know, I've been focused for this fight because I, I feel like people started doubting me. And I, you know, I, I've been on the dog before. I've been on the dog. It's not, it's not an issue. It's not an issue. I don't cry off things like that. But stuff like that makes me, makes me hungry. And I brought in the best to push me. You know, no matter what. Like you, like you said, if you, if I can, if I can hang with him, like it's like I said, I think, I think Carl Frederick said that um that Bud probably takes it easy on me. No, you just seen it. You just seen the proof right there. That's not that. That's, that, that's not gonna help me with a guy like Carl Frederick. No. I need Bud Crawford to be the same Bud Crawford that was in there with a guy like Kel Brook not too long ago or, or or whoever. So I need that experience to help me with this fight. And it's helped me a lot. And I, like I said, I feel a lot stronger. My mind's in the right place. You guys see, my, you see right now with me and my energy, I'm not, I don't have to trash talk to, to fool anybody and make, make them believe that I'm so superior over Carl Frederick. No, just let my, let my skill do the talking and we'll go from there. But, I've been ready for this fight. I'm grateful. I want to, I thank Carl Frampton for um for still taking the fight. And that's why I was gonna give another thing. Who what world, how many world champions, at least Americans, are willing to go travel anywhere to fight anybody in terms of um and they're the champion. You don't get that from guys like us. And you know what I mean? But I'm a real world champion and I don't care where the fight is at because at the end of the day, I believe in me. Well. We've run over slightly, and I know you've got other people to speak to, but I appreciate your time today. Best of luck with the rest of camp, of course. I look forward to watching you over on UK Shores next week. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you. Hey, you guys, hey, you guys do a great job. Continue doing what you guys are doing. And like I said, hopefully we can actually sit down in person for a change and do some more talking. 100%, Jamal. Thank you.